before we move on to the binomial theorem, we need to learn an important and interesting concept. We need to know something called the Pascal's triangle. Wondering what it is? Come, let's see. The Pascal's triangle is a triangle made up of numbers. Is that it? No, of course there's more to it. Let's see what a Pascal's triangle actually looks like. It looks something like this. Do you observe any pattern here? Have a close look. In the Pascal's triangle, each number is the sum of the two numbers directly above it. Yes, notice that 2 is the sum of 1 and 1. This 3 is the sum of 1 and 2. And this 3 is the sum of 2 and 1. 21 is the sum of 6 and 15 and so on. What else do we notice? We also see that the starting and the ending numbers are always 1 in each row. Yes, all the numbers on the extreme left and all the numbers on the extreme right are all 1. In the Pascal's triangle, the rows are numbered starting from 0. This is the 0th row, this is the first one, then the second one and so on. The third row is 1, 3, 3, 1. The fifth row is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1 and so on. And you may be wondering why we need such a triangle. What do we even do with it? Don't worry, you'll get to know that soon. First, let me tell you some real interesting facts about the Pascal's triangle. Take a look here at these two diagonals on either side. What are they? Oh yes, they are the set of natural numbers. Awesome, isn't it? Can you find more patterns here? Check out these two diagonals. What could these possibly be? The numbers are 1, 3, 6, 10, 15 and so on. For each number, let's imagine the same number of circles. Let's arrange them like this. What do you see? We see that for each number, we can form equilateral triangles. 3 can be arranged like this. 6 can be arranged like this and so on. Such a set of numbers is called as a set of triangular numbers. Interesting, right? Now let me ask you the same question again. Do you notice any other pattern? It could be anything. Give it a shot. I want you to observe each row. Let's see what happens when we add up the numbers in each row of the Pascal's triangle. Try adding up the numbers in the second row. Adding up these numbers gives us 4. Now can you try adding the numbers in the third and the fourth row individually? What numbers do you get? Yes, we get 8 and 16. Do you see a pattern here? 4, 8, 16 and so on. 4 can be written as 2 squared. 8 is 2 cubed, 16 is 2 raised to 4 and so on. How can we generalize this pattern? Yes, the sum of each row can be represented as a 2 raised to the number of the row. You can check it out for any row. Take the 7th row for instance. We will get the sum as 128 which is nothing but 2 raised to 7. So many patterns, right? But you may be wondering, how will we use this Pascal's triangle in the binomial theorem? Let's see how. Can you tell me the formula of a plus b the whole square? Yes, it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Can you tell me what the power of the binomial here is? You're right, it's 2. This power is also called the index of the binomial. Now, before we proceed further, we need to know what binomial coefficients are. Binomial coefficients are the coefficients of each term in the expansion of the binomial. Can you tell me what the binomial coefficients here are? Yes, they are 1, 2 and 1. 
Now let's go back and see the Pascal's triangle. Can you tell me the numbers in the second row? The numbers in the second row are the same as the coefficients in the expansion with index 2. Now let's try it out with another expansion. Let's consider a plus b the whole cubed. And we know its formula, right? Yes, it's a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. What are the coefficients here? They are 1, 3, 3 and 1. Are the numbers the same as that of the third row of the Pascal's triangle? Oh yes, they are. So, what can we conclude from this? We can say that each row in a Pascal's triangle gives us the binomial coefficients for the expansion having any index.